Hey Techno Studs, it's time to get more in depth into that DSCP field. So let's take a look at what bits actually go into that field. In this video, we're gonna start out by talking about some of the standards for DSCP. We're gonna take a little bit about the history of DCP or what was before DSCP and what DSCP looks like now. There's a few different standards, so we'll talk about those few different standards. Then we're gonna get more specific into the class selector and even more specific into the assured forwarding. We'll talk about the DSCP list and then we'll wrap this up by talking about RFC 4594. RFC 2474 defines this DSCP field. And we have these six bits here for this DSCP field. However, there was an older standard and that older standard was RFC 791. And it defined only three bits and we called this the precedence field. So what is the precedence of this packet? And so that is term is still used when it comes to DSCP. We refer to these first three bits as the precedence field. It just gives us some more granularity with how we treat this. So these first three bits are still the most significant and make the biggest impact on what the importance is of this packet, what the priority is of this packet. So just keep that in mind as we go along here. The first three bits are the most critical and these last three bits are to give it some extra functionality. Uh, functionality essentially is what it does. So what are the standards? <laughs> it's kind of interesting how this gets formed. The DSCP has several different standards that you can implement on here. So for one, you just have the best effort. That's the one of just, well, I'll get to it if I can get to it, but I'm not gonna try to prioritize this at all. So it's just a binary 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Remember this DSCP field is six bits long. So this is the default. It's the first ones that are gonna get dropped and it corresponds with the uh, class of service. And we talked about class of service and remember that class of service is a layer two thing. All right. Next, we have this class selector, not to be confused with class of service. Class of service is layer two. Class selector is layer three, although they do correspond with each other, but uh, class selector is different. It defined, it's defined once again by this RFC 2474. So what it does is it just has the last three bits as zero and the first three bits is what actually defines what, uh, what the priority is of this. So it uses those first three bits. And once again, it actually does correspond, map directly to the class of service, the layer two. So what is a 001 in class selector would be a 001 in, in the class of service. So they correspond directly, but just realize that one defines layer two first and the other one defines layer three. It is compatible with that uh, RFC 791. We talked about RFC 791 being the old standard, that precedence that we, that we set. And so uh, this it fits right in there with that. So it's, it's the same type of labeling with that. Then we have the assured forwarding. This is what gives us the extra capabilities. And we'll talk about those extra capabilities as we go along here. And that's defined by RFC uh, 2597. It's the first five bits that are variable here. The last bit for some reason is zero and uh, utilizes these extra fields at the end, or at least two of the extra fields at the end. And then we have expedited forwarding. Expedited forwarding is defined by RFC 3246, and the binary for this is 101110. And the first three bits still correspond with our class of service. The 
Best effort and expedited forwarding are really simple, so we're not gonna get really in depth into that. But this class selector and assured forwarding is a little more in depth. So we're gonna cover this class selector and then we're going to spend most of our time on this assured forwarding. Let's get more in depth into the class selector. The class selector is directly correlated with that class of service, something we went over in our last video. And we talked about the values and how as the values increase, so does the priority of that frame that's involved because this is layer two, remember. And the binary, here's the binary equivalent of those values right there. So then we have the class selector, which is a layer three and we've said it's directly correlated. So we see that a value of zero in the class service is a CS zero in the class selector. And CS1, CS2, CS3, it's the binaries all line up exactly the same as well, at least the first three bits. We do add this second set of zeros to it. We're not really utilizing them, but since they are added, it does shift our values a little bit. So if you were to do the binary equivalent of these, then these are the numbers that you would come up with, which is why it goes 0, 8, 16, uh, 24, and it, it looks a little different than this class of service. But that's the class selector. So since the class selector really doesn't add much to our DSCP field, we have to create a different standard for that. So that's where assured forwarding comes in. It adds on some more granularity in how we prioritize our traffic. All right, so with the assured forwarding, essentially we have four classes. And once again, as we go up through the classes, the traffic becomes more important. So a class four is a higher priority than a class three and a class two and a class one. But what we also have is we recognize that if we are going to drop some of the information, we, we, we wanna maybe treat some of this traffic a, a little more on an equal level. So we wanna identify out of each one of these classes, what is the traffic we want to drop and what is the class the the traffic from each of those classes we don't want to drop so for that purpose we have a low drop a medium drop and a high drop and so you can see that the labeling of these all start with an af so that stands for assured forwarding and then the number of class here so one two three four one two three four one two three four and then we also have then the, whether it's a low drop and the ones here or the medium drop, the second digit is a two here and a high drop, the second digit is a three drop. So what essentially will happen is, is this traffic as a class four goes through the network, it's going to prioritize this traffic but it's going to, uh, if it runs into contention, then this is gonna be the first stuff that gets dropped, and this is gonna be the last stuff that gets dropped here. So it gives a little more structure to this and allows for dropping of some of these other classes and without, um, without having one of the classes completely take over of the whole network if it gets overran. So that is assured forwarding. There is some nuances with this, so let's go over what some of these nuances look like when it comes to the DSCP field and what the DSCP field looks like. So here is the binary equivalent for each one of these. So if you notice, the 001 corresponds with this first one, and the 01 corresponds with the second one, okay? That uh, makes sense because here is 001, 001, 001. Here is 010, which is the equivalent of two across here. So all of those line up. This is three, so, and then four. So all of them line up with this first digit of here. Okay, and then the second two bits here, or this, this second set of bits here, then define 
what this is. So these are all ones, these are all ones, these are all twos, these are all binary twos, and these are all threes, and these are all, all binary threes. So all of those line up. So uh, <laughs> make sure you get this down before you go, before we go on to the next slide, because it's going to get a little more complicated as we go along here. Still not too complicated here because we all we do here is we've added a zero to the end of this because the DSCP field always ends in a zero and it's six bits long. So we add a zero to the end of this. Now comes the a little more tricky part here. Now if we were to take this binary number, then we'd figure out what the decimal equivalent is of this DSCP field. So we take this, we convert it to decimal and we get 10. We take this and we convert it to a decimal and we get 12. And we take this, we convert it to a decimal and we get 14. It kind of counts up weird because then we jump to 18, 20, 22, 26, 28, 30. So it's kind of a strange way of figuring out these numbers. But just realize that we have the AF value here, AF11, and then we have the DSCP binary, and we have the DSCP uh, just digits, just um, regular uh, digits here. So um, that is how all of these correspond, and we'll see how that plays out here when it comes to the other uh, standards that we talked about. The thing is with all of this is we could use it all. We could be selective in what we want to use, which fields we want to use. And so this is the list of all of them. This is the DSCP field. Here's the binary of those DSCP fields. Some of them are the class, uh, or the, yeah, the class selector. Some of them are the assured forwarding. Some of them are, there's this expedited, forward and there's the best effort. And so, and then here is the decimal value that's associated with them, the decimal DSCP value. And this is how it co corresponds to the class of service, that layer two right there. So we've got a big long list of different ways we can classify this and mark these these different packets. And so what when we're talking about QoS, you would choose how you would want to implement this and what fields you would want to use and how you're gonna classify those fields. So this is all to mark those packets so that as it goes from hop to hop, from it goes from device to device, it knows how to prioritize those packets and those, those, uh, uh, and those frames. So which ones do we use? Well, there is now yet one more standard that we will talk about, and that is this RFC 4594. And what the RFC 4594 does is it goes through and tells you which of these fields you should use depending on what you're trying to do. So once again, we don't need to get real in depth into this, but just realize there's this RFC 4594, which defines, okay, we've got all of these DSCP standards out there. How should we utilize these DSCP standards? There you have it. So we talked about the few different DSCP standards that are out there. And we talked more in depth about one of those standards, which being the class selector, which is fairly basic. And then we got into the assured forwarding, which has a couple little weird nuances to it and how it determines the DSCP value. Then we went over the full DSCP list and we wrapped it up by talking about RFC 4594 and how it defines how, where you would use the different categorizations for with that DSCP list. <laughs> <laughs>